said Rosie. Gran wouldn't say what that song was either. No, she wouldn't. And I haven't heard her sing that one before. Hmm, said Rosie. And, <sighs> said Robin. And, hmm, <sighs> said Robin and Rosie, both together. Hello, Fury. Hello. Have you got anything for him to eat? Oh, crumbs, no. I should have got him a carrot. Oh, wait a minute. Um, I think I've got a sweet in my pocket. Yes. Ugh. It's all covered with fluff. Oh, Fury won't mind. He eats them with a paper on sometimes. <laughs> Laughed Robin. Oh, yes. <laughs> Here you are then, Fury. That's it. Do you know, Fury, she half whispered to him, do you know that some of the grown-ups have a secret? <laughs> I think he does, Rosie. <laughs> Robin laughed. Uh, what shall we do, eh? Shall we go and ask Mr. Ship about it? <laughs> he says we should. <laughs> Oh, right, we will. <laughs> You're a good donkey, <coughs> said Fury. And off went Robin and Rosie to find Mr. Ship. Hello, Mr. Ship. Hello. Hello, my dears. Are you there, Mr. Ship? Yes, I'm here. Oh, good. Come on, Rosie. Oh, Robin, not there, there. He's over there, there. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I thought you meant here in the boat, Mr. Ship. No, no. <laughs> I'm here up this ladder. Uh, what are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm a coming down the ladder, said Mr. Ship, puffing and blowing as he climbed carefully down the big ladder. There. Ah, well, now, and what? Oh, Mr. Ship, what have you done? Oh, Mr. Ship, are you all right? Done? All right? <laughs> well, of course I'm all right. But, but, but your eye. My eye? Oh, <laughs> oh, bless my barnacles. I've forgotten to take it off, laughed the old sailor. But what is it? asked Robin. Well, it's my pirate's eye patch. But you're not a pirate, Mr. Ship. Well, no, but I will be at the concert. The concert? What concert? Why, the, the first birthday concert. First birthday, Mr. Ship, said Rosie. Who's one year old? asked Robin. Oh, why, bless you. It's one year since you moved into the Bucket and Spade guest house, and we're having a concert instead of a birthday party. Gosh, said Rosie. That's what Gran was singing that song for. She said it was what she was going to sing at the concert. Oh, yes. And Dad said that he wanted the top hat for the concert. Yes. And didn't they tell you? I bet they were going to surprise us, said Rosie. Yeah, I bet they were. <laughs> well, well, laughed Mr. Ship. And now you can surprise them. What? How do you mean, Mr. Ship? Asked Robin. Well, I mean, you could do something for the concert. Oh, yes. We could do some ballet dancing. Oh, no, Rosie, I can't do it. But, but we, we could do forward rolls. No, Robin, I'm no good at those. <laughs> Here, uh, what about a song then? Hmm, said Robin and Rosie, both together. But then Rosie said, Hey, I know. What about that poem? Oh, well, now, a poem would be good, said Mr. Ship. And Robin said, uh, What poem? The one about the puffin, you know. Uh, there once was a puffin. Oh, yes, uh, just the shape of a muffin. Yes, that's a good one. 
Well, there you are then. Oh, great. Well, said the old sailor, a puffin is a little fat bird with a funny beak. So I suppose I could make a puffin's beak for you. Oh, smashing, said Robin. I think Rosie should be the puffin, because it was her idea. Hear, hear, said Mr. Ship. And very nice of you to think of it, Robin. Oh, gosh, thanks, Robin, said Rosie. A and you could be the fishes in the poem. Oh, yes, great. Well, I, I suppose we'd better go and practice. Uh, oh, when is the concert, Mr. Ship? Why, it's next week. I'm turning my old shed here into a theatre. Oh, great. great, said Robin and Rosie both together. And just then, Mrs. Cockle came into the boatyard. Hello, Mr. Ship. Oh, morning, Mrs. Cockle. Hello, Hello Mummy. Hello, you two. Lunch is nearly ready, so you'd better come in and have a wash. Right, All right, right Mummy. Um... Did you have any luck with the tea chest, Mr. Ship? Oh, I did indeed, my dear. I found a beauty at the back of the shed here. Now, hang on a minute. What's a tea chest, Mummy? Oh, it's a kind of wooden box. What's it for, Mum? Oh, uh, well, it's for, um, it's for, um... Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know! I bet it's for the concert! Oh. Oh, you know about the concert. <laughs> Mr. Ship told us, and we're going to be in it. Oh, are you? And what are you going to do? Ha ha, said Rosie. And we're not telling, said Robin. Oh, well, in that case, said Mrs. Cockle as Mr. Ship came back with the box. In that case, I'm not telling what the tea chest is for. We'll just have to wait and see next week, week said Robin and Rosie both together and they all went in for lunch. Cockleshell Bay is a town near the sea, with sunshine and seagulls that screech. There are shops that sell ices and buckets and spades so that children can play on the beach. There are white painted houses along the seafront where folk come for a quiet holiday. Where the sky is bright, the winds are light and two children stay. So meet Robin and Rosie of Cockleshell Bay. Okay, well, if I hold this here, could you open the door? Right, okay. Uh, lift your end, Chris. That's it. Just a minute, I'll get it round this corner. I don't know why we had to move to another house anyway, said Rosie Cockle. I like the old one. It's cause Dad doesn't want to work in a factory anymore, said Robin. And Mummy doesn't want to live in a town. Well, said Rosie in a sulk, this is a town, isn't it? Yes, said Robin. But Cockleshell Bay is only a little town, not like Ruffington where we used to live. And it's got the sea and the beach and boats and that. Yes. Rosie was beginning to feel a bit happier. She'd been so fed up about leaving her old house that she'd forgotten all about the things she did like in Cockleshell Bay. And just then, their dad came out of the house, carrying lots of bits of paper. Will one of you lift the lid off the dustbin for me? 
They both said, I, I will. will. Together. I want to do it, said Robin. Well, I was here first, shouted Rosie. Let go. No. Robin, Rosie. Mr. Cockle was quite cross. Do it together and carefully. Thank you, silly pair. Daddy, said Rosie. Yes, Rosie. Can we help move the furniture round? Oh, afraid not, said their father. It's too heavy and you'll only get bumped into. Well, can we go to the beach, Dad? I'm sorry, Robin, but you don't know the way yet, and I've too much to do here. You'll just have to be patient and play in the garden. And he went inside. Well, I want to go to the beach, said Rosie. Well, we can't, said Robin. Then Mrs. Cockle, their mother, came out, and she was carrying rubbish, too. Could one of you lift the lid off the bin for me, she said. And they said, we'll, we'll both, both do it. it. And they did. Thank you, said their mother as she put the rubbish in. Mum, said Robin. Yes, Robin. Can we go down to the harbour and look at the boats? Oh, not on your own, said Mrs Cockle. You don't know the way, uh, and I can't come. I've too much to do. You'll just have to be patient and play in the garden. And she went inside too. Oh, said Rosie, very crossly. Grown-ups are always too busy. What shall we do now? said Robin. I don't know, said Rosie. But all at once, Rosie had an idea. Let's be removal men, she said. Oh, that's a good idea, said Robin. Yes, let's. Robin found a big cardboard box and put it near the back door. Then they started looking for things to remove. There were some plates, and Rosie put those in the box. And Robin found their welly boots and put those in too. And there was still room for a nice shiny kettle, a tea towel, a packet of biscuits, and half a brick that Rosie tripped over in the garden. She put that in as well. In case, she said, the house we move to needs mending. The box was very heavy. Rosie tried to lift it, ah. but she couldn't. Then Robin tried, oh. and he couldn't lift it either. So they tried to slide it along, but it kept getting stuck on rough bits in the path. Come on, Robbie, push. Ooh, gosh, it's heavy. Uh, right, heave. Come on. Uh. And Rosie was pulling and Robin was pushing when all at once the bit of cardboard that Rosie was pulling at tore. Whatever are you two doing? It was a lady they didn't know. We're removing, said Rosie. Dear me, said the lady. You've only just arrived in Cockleshell Bay. Who are you? Robin asked. Oh, I'm Mrs. Rowty, said the lady. Only everyone calls me Gran Rowty. Why? said Rosie. Cause I have eleven grandchildren. Gosh, said Robin. Then he said, our gran died, so we haven't got one. Oh dear, said Gran Rowty. Well, you'd better have me for a gran now and again. Is that why you've come? Rosie wanted to know. My word, you two do ask a lot of questions, said Gran Rowty. No, your mother, Mrs. Cockle, asked me to come to see if I'd help her with the guest house. What's a, a guest house? Oh, it's like a small hotel. It's where people come to stay for a holiday. It's where you live. This is going to be a guest house. Oh. oh. Now, no more questions. I must see your mum. 
Oh, hello, Mrs. Rowty. I'm so glad you've come. Come in and have a cup of tea. And Gran Rowty and Robin and Rosie's mother went into the house. Oh, look, said Rosie all at once. It isn't another garden next to ours. It's a, a, a funny place. And if you're used to seeing gardens all in a row, it was a funny place. It had a funny old wooden shed with planks missing here and there. And inside it, you could just see coils of rope and step ladders and tins of paint and... Oh, look, said Rosie again. A boat. Crumbs, yes, said Robin. A big one. It was big. And of course, it wasn't in the sea so that they could see all the parts of the boat that were usually under the water. And that seemed to have bits missing too. And there was another ladder and... A pair of pumps, said Robin. And there's more to them than that, said another voice they didn't know. There's feet in those pumps and legs on those feet and meat on those legs. And at that, the pumps and feet and legs all came out from under the boat. And there was Mr. Ship. That's my name, said the man. Well, Mr. Shipham, really, but everyone calls me Mr. Ship. Like they call Mrs. Rowty Gran, said Rosie. Oh, been talking to Gran Rowty, have you? Why, she's an old friend of mine. Yes, that's right. Gran Rowty and Mr. Ship. And what's your name? Rosie Cockle, said Rosie. And yours? Robin Cockle, said Robin. Robin and Rosie Cockle, eh? said Mr. Ship. <laughs> That's a good name for Cockle Shell Bay folk. And uh, when did you arrive? Today, Today, said Robin and Rosie together. Oh, <laughs> as long ago as that, said the old man. Well, then, you're going to be busy finding out about us all, aren't you? About who all? said Rosie. Why, oh, bless me barnacles about all of us who already lives here. Robin was just going to say, yes, but who are they, when... Robin! Rosie! Their mother called. Right, off you go home now, but next time I'll let you meet a friend of mine with big ears who likes carrots. All right? Oh, yes, yes please. please! Said Robin and Rosie, both together. You're looking very cheerful said Mrs. Cockle. Are you going to like living here? Oh, yes, said Robin and Rosie together. And they went in for lunch. said Mrs. Cockle. Phew, said Mr. Cockle. Phew, said Gran Rowty, and Phew, said Robin and Rosie, both together. Well, that's all the furniture in its proper place, said Mr. Cockle. And I reckon we've earned a rest. Right, Mrs. Rowty? Oh, I'll say, Mr. Cockle. Even poor old Teddy looks worn out, Rosie. Hmm, said Rosie. I think he's asleep. And they all said, Phew, again, once or twice. Then all at once, Robin said, Mummy? Yes, Robin? Now that we've properly removed, is this a... Um, a guest home? A guest house? <laughs> well, and Helen Cockle laughed, not until we've made it look nicer than this. And we'll have to have people staying here on holiday, 
said Mr. Cockle. And you'll have to have a name for it, said Grand Rowdy. That made Mr. Cockle sit up. Gosh, Helen, he said, I'd forgotten all about a name. So had I, said Mrs. Cockle. Well, all the other little hotels and that are called something. Place next door is called Pine Villa. How about calling our guest house High Tide because it's near the sea, said Christopher Cockle. But Mrs. Cockle didn't think that was a good idea. <laughs> People might think it's so near the sea that the water comes into the house at High Tide, she laughed. How about calling it the Anchor because it's near to the harbour where all the boats are? But Grand Rowdy didn't think that was a good idea. There's a little hotel to the side of the village that's already called the Anchor, she said. You'd have folk going to the wrong place. Oh dear, said Mrs Cockle. Oh dear, said Mr Cockle. Oh dear, oh dear. said Robin and Rosie together. The three grown-ups laughed at that. You don't have to worry about it, said their mother. We'll think of something. Why don't you go into the garden and play while we get on in here? Oh, oh yes. yes, said Robin and Rosie. What shall we do? asked Rosie. Let's go and see if Mr. Ship's in his yard, said Robin, and Rosie agreed. Mr. Ship, called Robin. Mr. Ship! Hello, my dears, called Mr. Ship, but they couldn't see him. Hello, he called again. Perhaps he's under his boat again, said Rosie. Mr. Ship! Mr. Ship! Hello, I'm up here! Robin and Rosie looked up, and there he was on top of his old boat. Hang on, he called. I'm coming down. Were you going to sail it round the world today, Mr. Shippen? asked Robin. Well, not before lunch, smiled the old man. And do call me Mr. Ship, like everyone else does. Anyway... Rosie chipped in. He couldn't sail it round the world because it's got holes in it. Well, he could have mended it, said Robin. No, he couldn't. Yes, he could. No, 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 said Mr. Ship. Anyone who fights in my yard gets nothing to eat for a week but ship's biscuits. They knew he didn't mean it, but they stopped arguing anyway. And then Rosie asked Mr. Ship, Will it sail one day, Mr. Ship? Oh, she certainly will, my dear, she certainly will, said Mr. Ship. I was doing a bit of work on her bows when you turned up. Um, th the bows, said Rosie. Don't you know where the bows are, said the old sailor. Why, the, the bow on a boat is the front of the boat, the sharp end. There, that's the bows. Oh, I see, Mr. Ship, said Robin. And, and what's the back of the boat called? Oh, that's the stern. Bow and stern. Bow and stern, said Rosie. I see. Then, bless my barnacles, said Mr. Ship. I'm forgetting my promise. What's that, Mr. Ship? Well, last time I saw you, I said I'd introduce you to a friend of mine with long ears who eats carrots. Oh, said Robin and Rosie, both together again. And he lives in a sort of house over here. The sort of house was a little shed with a funny door in two halves. The top of the door was open and the bottom half was closed. Fury, called Mr. Ship. Come on, Fury. Who's Fury? asked Robin. Oh, you'll see. Fury, come on. There was a sort of blowing and rustling from the back of the shed, and then a big, gentle, hairy face was poked out of the open half of the door. A horse, said Rosie. A donkey, said Mr. Ship. A donkey called Fury. He doesn't look like a Fury, said Robin. 
<laughs> you don't behave like your fury either, said Mr. Ship. I think he was called that as a little joke because he's so gentle. You just try stroking his nose. They did, and Fury loved it. Is he your donkey, Mr. Ship? asked Rosie. No, no, he just lives in my yard. He belongs to a man called Arthur Fingal, and he gives rides to the children on the beach. And I don't know why he isn't there today. But I know someone who's going to be on the beach this afternoon. Oh, said Rosie. Who? Well, if it's all right with your mum and dad, you are. Because I'm going to take you. Oh, oh said Robin and Rosie both together. And, said the old man, I've got something here that you need to have with you on the beach. There, he said. You can't live at the seaside and not have a bucket and spade. Seaside and buckets and spades goes together. Gosh, thank, thank you. you, said Robin and Rosie together. And then Rosie said, Do. Seasides and buckets and spades always go together? Always, said Mr. Ship. Well then, said Rosie, that's what we could call our guest house. Hmm, said Mr. Ship. It'd certainly be different. Come on, said Robin. Let's tell Mummy and Daddy. They got to the back door in a rush, just as Mr. and Mrs. Cockle were coming to look for them. Mummy, we've seen a donkey called Fury. And Mr. Ship's boat's going to sail around the world, and he's going to take us to the beach. And he's given us a bucket and spade each. And that's what we could call our guest house. The, the bucket, bucket and spade. spade. The, the bucket, bucket and spade. spade, said Mr. and Mrs. Cockle both together. What a nice idea. Shall we? said Mrs. Cockle. Yes! said Mrs. Cockle and Mr. Cockle and Robin and Rosie all together. And they all went and had their lunch in the bucket and spade guest house. Mr. Cockle was cleaning the new sign on the back door of the Bucket and Spade guest house. Robin, Rosie, come on quick, but be quiet. The two of them came tumbling out, not all that quietly, but quietly enough for them. What is it, Daddy? asked Rosie. We've got a visitor. Gosh! said Robin. What a big bird. What is it? It's a seagull, said Helen Cockle. I've been feeding it. Mummy, said Rosie. There's something funny about its wing. Oh, you're right, it must have broken it sometime. Poor thing, said Rosie. It's very tame, she said. But just as she said it, the seagull squawked. It made a jump, and Robin thought that was very funny. Don't you laugh, you're silly, said Rosie. Well, said Robin, you're a scaredy cat. I am not. That's enough, you two, said Mrs. Cockle. You're never happy unless you're squabbling, 
It wasn't quite true, but it was true enough. And Robin and Rosie calmed down. Well, I must get on with some work, said Mr Cockle. And so must I, said Mrs Cockle. Oh, said Robin. Where's the seagull gone? I expect it's flown off to its friends, said Rosie. How could it fly with a bent wing? Well, I don't know. Maybe we could search for it. Oh, we'll never find it. While they were thinking about what to do, Mr Shippham came across from his boatyard just next door. Hello, my dears, he said. Your mum in, is she? Yes, said Rosie. I'll tell her. Mummy, Mr Ship's here. Hello, Mr Ship. Oh, morning, Mrs. Cockle. I, hear, I have to go down to the harbour to help a friend of mine. The engine on his boat's broken down. I wondered if... Uh, I'm just on my way to the village now, said Mrs. Cockle. I'm going to do a bit of shopping. I'll give you a lift in our car. Well, ain't I the lucky one, said Mr. Ship. Thank you. Right, children, said Mrs. Cockle. Daddy's upstairs painting the back bedroom. Don't go off anywhere without telling him. Can we go in your yard, Mr. Ship? asked Robin. Well, yes, said Mr. Ship, but don't mess about with any tools or paint, or I'll keel haul the pair of you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. And then Mr. Ship and their mother went off. Bye, Mum. Bye, Mr. Ship. I'll tell Dad where we're going, said Robin. We're going into Mr. Ship's yard, Dad. All right. And I've got um, one, two, three, four biscuits. You'll get fat, shouted Mr. Cockle. Bye then. Bye. Bye. The two of them went across the grass and threw the hole in the fence into Mr. Ship's yard. Let's have a look at the donkey, said Robin. Fury, called Rosie. Fury. <coughs> Mr. Fingal's donkey came from the back of its stall and pushed its great, gentle, hairy face at them to be stroked. I think he's hungry, said Rosie. He always is, said Robin. Give him one of our biscuits. But Fury took two. Oh, we'd better keep the others in case we get hungry, said Robin, and Rosie agreed. They gave Fury a last pat and went to have a look at Mr. Ship's old boat. It looked just the same as it always did, with the same bits missing from the same places. Perhaps we could mend it for him, suggested Robin. But Rosie said, oh, no, Mr. Ship said we're not to touch his tools. All right then, let's build our own boat and sail that round the world. Oh, yes! Rosie thought that was a smashing idea, and they started to look around for things to build it from. Rosie found an old tin bath with a handle at each end. It had a hole in the bottom. But that doesn't matter, she said. It'll do for the, uh, the, the big bit. The hull, said Robin. Mr. Ship told me it was called the hull. And I've got an empty cardboard box for the bridge. That's where the captain stands, said Rosie. Yes, I know. There. They looked at it. It's got a hull, said Rosie. And it's got a bridge, said Robin. It ought to have a mast and a sail. Yes. There's the yard brush. I'll go and get it. While she was away, Robin found an old sack for the sail that was only a bit dirty, and then Rosie came back with the yard brush, and it didn't take them long at all to get their boat finished. Now, said Robin, let's sail round the world. Who's going to be captain? Well, I'll be captain, and you can be the crew. Why can't I be captain? Because I'm bigger than you, said Robin. No, you're not. So they stood back to back to measure who was tallest, but of course, then, they couldn't see themselves. So in the end, Robin said, 
I know. Let's take turns at being captain. And Rosie agreed. Then they set sail on their long voyage. A whale! Ship ahoy! Land ho! Hoist the mainsail! After a bit, they thought they must be about halfway round the world, so Rosie, who was being captain, said, A desert island! Let's land! Robin lowered the sail. Time for ship's biscuits, he said. Uh, we've only got chocolate digestives, said Rosie. No, win the game. Mr. Ship says that's what they used to eat when he was a sailor. Oh, said Rosie. Uh, they're in the back. Um, the stern. They've gone, she said. I put them in there and they've gone. I bet you've eaten them. No, I haven't, said Robin very crossly. I bet you have. Have not, said Rosie even crosser. And they were pushing each other quite hard when an awful <coughs> made them stop. They turned round <coughs> to see the seagull with the bent wing. It had one webbed foot on a piece of chocolate biscuit and was pecking lumps off it. Gosh, said Robin. The seagull must have taken them. <laughs> Robin, Rosie, have you two nuisances had my yard brush? Oh, yes, Mum, said Robin. It's the mast of our ship. Oh, that's good, said Mrs Cockle. <laughs> but I'm afraid you'll have to put into harbour for repairs. I want to sweep the path. They fished the brush out of the cardboard box. Mummy, ah. said Rosie, the seagull's stolen our ship's biscuits. Oh, it must be a pirate seagull. A pirate, said Rosie. A pirate's a bad sailor who robs other sailors and sinks their ships, said their mother. Oh, said Robin, can we give him a pirate name? Hmm, said Helen Cockle, thinking, how about... Ben Gunn. He was quite a nice pirate. Oh, yes, yes, said Robin and Rosie, both together. Now, come in and have some lunch. You can sail round the world again this afternoon when I've swept the path. They both thought that was a very good idea. Bye-bye, Ben, ben Gunn, Gunn, they said, and the seagull squawked. seagull with a bent wing had been looking for scraps around the cockle's dustbin. Now he was listening, with his head on one side and shuffling his big webbed feet, to the awful din that was coming from the kitchen of the bucket and spade and guest house. And if the noise outside was bad, inside it was even worse. Here, you two! Robin! Rosie! Hey! Oh, hello. Did you want us? I should think I did. I can't hear myself think. And I can't hear myself talk, said Helen Cockle, their mother. And I can't even hear myself shout, said their father, Christopher Cockle. And I can't get any work done for the racket. And neither, neither can, can we, we, said Mrs Cockle and Gran Rowty, both together. Sorry, said Robin with a grin. We were being a band, said Rosie. Well, said Mr Cockle, it was a good band. And I liked the tune, said Gran Rowty, what I could hear of it. Oh yes, agreed Mrs Cockle, very nice. 
I only hope my lids are still in one piece. Oh, they are, said Robin. Oh, yes, said Rosie. Well, the cake tin's got a little bit of a dent in it. Well, that's all right, said their mother. But I think we'd all be able to get on with our jobs if you two went out. Ah, agreed Gran Rowdy. That we would. And it's a nice day, chipped in their father, so you hop it and play. All right, said Robin. We'll go and see if Mr. Ship's in. See you later, said Rosie. I didn't think we were all that noisy, said Rosie. And Robin agreed. I could have banged a lot harder, he said. Anyway, shall we go and see if Mr. Ship's in? Yes, let's, said Rosie. And then she said, no, let's go and see if Fury's in first. Oh, yes said Robin. Well, you go and see him, and I'll catch up in a minute. Where are you going? asked Robin. But Rosie was already on her way. You'll see, she called back at him. Hmm, he muttered, and went across the garden towards the hole in the fence. Fury, the donkey, who was sometimes down on the beach giving rides to children on holiday, was having a day off and looking at the world over the top of his stable door. Hello, Fury said Robin. Hello, old boy. And he stroked Fury's nose, which the donkey seemed to like an awful lot. I haven't got anything for you to eat today, Robin said to him. I should have got some bread from the kitchen. But I've got something for you. It was Rosie, and she was carrying a small cabbage and a bunch of carrots. I got them out of the vegetable garden, she panted. Mummy said it'd be all right. That's not fair. Robin was upset. You should have told me. I haven't got any now. Well, I thought of it, said Rosie. But you should have told me. 